All right, in this section where you have to solve for the vertex, once you get x by doing the negative of b over 2a, so let's say you did that and you got 3, x was 3, and you have to substitute that back into the equation, and it has a negative x squared in it. When you substitute that 3 in there, a lot of you are going to say the answer to this is positive 9, because you're going to say negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, therefore this is a positive 9. And that would be incorrect, people. It's actually a negative 9, and it's hard to see that. So in an attempt to help you avoid this mistake, here's how I'm going to explain it. It, it all comes down to PEMDAS. So for example, let's make this a negative 2x squared, and we'll still say x is equal to 3. So instead of substituting an at a 3 back into here, let's say you got to substitute it into here. What would you do? Would you do negative 2 times 3 squared is negative 6 squared? Is that what you would do? I would hope not. I think that's easier to see that that's what you would not do because you do not multiply before you do exponents. PEMDAS, E comes before M. You would do 3 squared and get 9, and then you would multiply the 9 by 2 and get negative 18. So this would be negative 18, not negative 6 squared, which is positive 36. All right, you can see how you could get both these answers. If you multiply first, you get this, and then you square it. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Or if you do the exponent first, you get 9, you multiply, you get negative 18. Two completely different answers, this one being correct, this one being incorrect. So that's the same strategy, the same thought process that you use when you solve this problem. This problem doesn't have a number in it. So what is that number when there's no number in front of the variable? It's a one. So this is more like negative one times x squared is really what's going on here. This is negative one times x squared. So you substitute in the three and you get negative one times three squared. So just like the last time, are you gonna multiply the negative one first and then square it? Or are you gonna square it first and then multiply the negative one? You're going to square it first. You're going to do exponents before you multiply. So this is negative 1 times 9, which is actually negative 9. So that's how you get from this answer or this problem to negative 9, not positive 9. All right, if you multiply these together first, then you have negative 3 squared. And that's what a lot of you want to do. You want to multiply this together first to get negative 3 squared and then square it and get positive 9. This answer is not positive 9. I know it's confusing, but I hope that helps. If it's a negative 2x squared, it's a lot easier to see. If there's a number in front of the x, it's a lot easier to see that you square it first and then you multiply by that number. Well, there is a number in front of the x here. It's a 1. All right, another thing you're going to run into is you're going to have fractions. x is going to be a fraction that you're going to have to substitute back into. So let me just make up a problem here. Let's say um, x you got was 3 fourths. So here's your quadratic, and you already solved for x, and you get a fraction. Yesterday's due section, I didn't give you any fractions. Well, I'm going to today because I looked at the standard again, and you do have to substitute in fractions. So it's not really anything new to teach you. I just want to review with you on how to multiply fractions and how to add and subtract fractions, because that's all we're going to do here. First, you're going to put 3 fourths in for x. So you're going to have 3 fourths squared. And when you square a fraction, you're squaring the numerator and the denominator. So this is actually 9 sixteenths. You square the 3 to get 9, and you square the 4 to get 16. All right, then you had plus 2 times 3 fourths. Now, when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, that whole number is really the numerator of 2 over 1. The whole number always gets multiplied by the numerator in your fraction. So this is 6 over 4. So you're adding 6 over 4, and then just the regular old minus 3. You're almost always, when you substitute in a fraction, going to have to create your own common denominators when you get to this point. After you do the multiplication, you're most likely not going to have a common denominator because this one's going to get squared, and that's going to change the denominator that you started with. 
This one doesn't change, so you're going to have two different denominators. So you're going to turn this, the small denominator into the bigger one by multiplying it by 4. So that's 9 sixteenths plus 24 sixteenths. If you multiply the denominator by 4, you have to multiply the numerator by 4 also. Now you can add those together to get 33 over 16 minus 3, and now the annoying problem is not over. You still have to subtract 3 from 33 sixteenths, and that is not going to be easy for a lot of people. But it's the same process to get from 6 fourths to 24 sixteenths as it is to get from 3 to 48 sixteenths. You might be like, what? Well, think of 3 as 3 over 1. And how do you turn a 1 into a 16? Remember, you're turning the little denominator into the big one. 1 is smaller than 16. 1 is the little denominator. How do you turn it into the big one? You multiply it by 16. Whatever you multiply the bottom by, you multiply the top by. So this becomes 33 over 16 minus 48 over 16, because 3 times 16 is 48. Now, if I have $33 and I take away 48, I'm going to be in debt. So this is going to be a negative answer. 33 minus 48. How much of this 48 got me down to zero? 33 of it. If it was 33 minus 33, I'd be at zero. But it's 33 minus 48. So it took 33 of this 48 to get me back to zero. How much do I still have left? 15 more. This is going to be negative 15. If you don't understand what I'm saying, then think about it like this. Look at this problem. Are you going to end up with a negative or a positive answer? Hopefully you can see that it's going to be negative because you're taking away more than what you have. And your only choice here is 48 minus 33, which is 15. So you, this is a subtraction problem. You can do the subtraction and get 15. You just have to ask yourself, is this a positive 15 or a negative 15? And that's where this comes into play. 33 minus 48, you're going to just have to think about that in your head and know that that is less than zero. When you take away more than what you have, you're going to end up with a negative number. You can do the subtraction the old-fashioned way. Just subtract the, the big one on top, the little one underneath, and subtract. But that doesn't mean your answer is positive. This tells you what your answer is, positive or negative. So this is negative 15 over 16. So if x was 3 fourths in this one, your vertex would be the point 3 fourths comma negative 15 16. So it's basically one negative one. I mean, it's pretty close to the origin. Negative 15 16 is almost negative one. 3 fourths is almost one. So it would be like right around there would be your vertex for that point. Maybe over just a touch. But yeah, you get the, you get the point here. Over Almost one, three-fourths, down, almost one, right there. So that's how you do these problems. PEMDAS and fraction rules. Bunch of old review coming back into play here.